welcome to another episode of geekoutdoors.com and as you could probably see this is basically the most popular thing at the moment pokemon go now this game was actually released on uh, apple's ios and android last week and it's just going bonkers you know it's already had 10 million plus download but what's more i guess what's more newsworthy on this is how much it's affecting people and how much is getting to the discussion of how technology specifically augmented reality is changing the way not only people play games but also how they interact with the world as a whole so if you're not familiar with pokemon go um, i am not a, uh, a pokemon i guess i would say a pokemon player so i i don't never really understood the appeal of pokemon but the whole point of the game is is for you to go and catch these uh, Pokemon monsters. But the difference with Pokemon Go is that it's done using augmented reality. And if you're not familiar with what it is, it's basically you are in the real world and the technology overlays virtual things on your screen. Okay, so with Pokemon Go, you have a virtual world, which is your map right here on the leftmost. And then in your real world, that's where you see the digital Pokemons. Okay, so that's basically the very simple concept okay but uh, this goes into augmented reality and if you search up augmented reality you know the basically the most popular thing on there right now is Pokemon Go and there have been other augmented reality apps before like layer and augmented reality has been talked about for a long time and it's not really anything new I would say um, but now that the technology is catching up and more people are becoming interested in such things as virtual reality, you know, with the HTC Vive, the Oculus. And now with Pokemon Go, Pokemon Go is definitely going to push augmented reality more and more into the mainstream, you know. So we're probably going to have a lot more um, augmented reality type apps, and games uh, coming forward. And it's definitely helping Nintendo's overall stock price at this point. It isn't made by Nintendo. The game is actually made by Niantic, if I remember correctly. So yeah, Niantic. Um, and that company originally was part of Google in a way. They were a project that spun off of Google. And so what does this really mean to us, not only as uh, gamers, but just also as just people in general? Well, as a gamer, it's going to give you more experiences for gaming, okay? Um, and because it is in the physical world, you're probably going to see more people outside, uh, which is, in one case, that's good, you know, I mean, it's good to get people active and be outside. But in another case, it can also be uh, dangerous in a way that, you know, we haven't really had to deal with before. For example, there have been recent news where a girl found a dead body due to this augmented reality app, which isn't dangerous in and of itself, but it could lead you into some really um, strange situations. And there's also been news where uh, people have robbed people uh, using this augmented reality app. So, you know, there are some consequences to this. You know, there's also been reports of people getting into accidents because they are not paying attention to their surroundings. And also another thing that you might want to think about is the actual privacy that you're giving away. So a lot of these augmented reality apps, they're definitely going to need to know your location. Okay. And uh, many other things. And, you know, if you look at the, the requirements below, they say they could add additional capabilities within each group. So even if you disable some of the permissions, they can add more permissions in the future. So how is this relevant uh, to you as a person or even as a consumer? Well, as anybody knows who creates content or, or does anything online, the more information you have about your consumer, the better. However, the way in which they take that information and use it, that is a whole different matter. And, the, and with games like this, they're going to have so much information on you. They're not only going to know where you go, but, you know, judging by where you're at, they could kind of guess about what your demographics are. Uh, they could guess about where you go on a regular basis. And depending on how much time you spend on your phone, they have a lot of data that they can then use for, uh, you know, their marketing purposes, their sales purposes, you know, to run their business. You know, that all makes sense. So we all got to realize that whenever we do uh, install these types of applications or games, we are going to be giving away a lot more of our privacy. Um, and that's to be expected. You know, I've talked about this at length before, but 
you know, that's, that is the new world that we are going to be giving away a lot of our privacy when we use these new types of uh, games and new types of applications, okay? So that's some of the, I guess, the negative sides of it, you know. But the positive sides are, just as I mentioned earlier, it does people get people outside, um, which is especially good for kids, you know. Um, you still have to be aware of what's going on, but at least it gets more people outside. And it also gives a really new experience that people have not been accustomed to before. And in the future, as this becomes more normal, it'll be a lot like those sci-fi movies where there's like virtual things all around us. Uh, we'll have contact lenses with augmented reality in them, you know, and who knows what other type of peripherals will be created. So uh, that is uh, basically it. That's just my quick thoughts on this whole Pokemon Go phenomenon. But really, I wanted to talk about my thoughts on augmented reality and kind of how it affects us. Um, not only as gamers, but just, just as people in general. So if you had any ideas on Pokemon Go or augmented reality, leave your ideas and comments below. And you know, if you did enjoy my videos, you get value out of these, leave a like. And as always, I am on Snapchat at Geek Outdoors. Thanks for checking out this episode. And as always, if you like these videos, be sure to click on the subscribe button. And for full written content, audio content, and additional geek stuff, head over to geekoutdoors.com and I'll see you outdoors on the very next episode.